What's up, folks? Welcome to Micro Cinema 4K, the highest quality live stream microscopy in the world. How are we doing tonight? Let me get my uh, chat popped out here. Do we not have audio? We should have audio. There I am. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so uh, welcome everyone. I don't know why my camera looks a little funky today. Sorry. Um, so uh, today I went up to Contra Costa County. Um, so uh, basically that is like northeast of the San Francisco Bay, um, and it is sort of uh, what's what's called. It, it's in a, this area, so there's Contra Costa County, um, and there's this whole line of bays and up into this delta called the San Francisco uh, Delta. Um, I think it's the San Francisco Bay Delta Estuary System or something like that. Um, but uh, it's this pretty incredible like waterway uh, that all comes together and like funnels down into the San Francisco Bay. And uh, it was the first time I've ever gone up there uh, to do any sample collecting. Um, and so I was just kind of around, um, there was a place called Bay Point, which is where I went first. And if you guys saw the trailer, um, that was from, from Bay Point. Um, I got some, uh, I sampled a, a pretty cool little puddle there. And, um, and then I did some, uh, some plankton netting. This is my, my little plankton net that I got from Amazon. Um, it's a it's a pretty dinky little thing to be honest, and I've just kind of like tied it to the end of a uh, a broomstick. And, uh, and I went to uh, another little park. I forget the name of that one. Just some some shore, um, some some public shore, um, and uh, did did a little bit of plankton netting out there. And uh, I got a bunch of cool plankton. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, today's stream might be a little scuffed. It might be a little short um, because when I put, I was I was pipetting up all the plankton and, uh, and getting them all on the side. I was like, oh, it's gonna be so good. I got all these cool plankton. And then like, I took a look at the slide and they were like all dead. Like <laughs> there's a couple I think that are still kicking, um, but I, I think there's some issue either with temperature and or salinity. Um, something for me to, to figure out in the future. I might need to put them on like a cold plate or uh, something to prevent evaporation. Um, but there is some, still some cool stuff there. Um, and we do have uh, some, some interesting slides to look at. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get right to it. Let's see, test, test, yep, audio is still here. So um, as usual, we are starting off with a prepared slide. And uh, I don't know the actual maker of this slide. I suspect that this is one of my oldest slides. Um, and uh, these are scales of soul. So S-O-L-E, fish. And uh, who would have thought that fish scales could look so absolutely incredible? Here we are with the, the 4X. So they have these, uh, I, I tried to look it up. I couldn't, I figured out what these are called when I first got these slides. These uh, these spines have a particular name. And, um, but that's a that's a trait of some fish scales that they have these like spines. Yeah, and they're just super cool. Um, I guess this this slide is, is a few of them. 
the range. And, um, but of course, what's really cool is that we can put them under polarized light. And, uh, and they have a real nice polarization response. And then we can, of course, hit them with the wave plate. And, uh, <laughs> they're just, they're just really rad. Um, super duper. Super duper neat. Take this down a little bit here. Yeah, these are are cool, and I think so. These are these are really old slides. And I think you can see these little strands here. I think that's fungus, um, which is growing. Uh, I think I think it's in the slide. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but. Uh, it doesn't really detract from my enjoyment of these really cool fish scales that are so beautiful in the polarized light. And they have so much like just texture, deep, deep texture. Let's put that. Uh, This is with the uh, the 10x here, and just look at those like little ridges, those like maze-like ridges on them. These are super far out. I actually have a few of these, uh, a few of these scales, um, but uh, this is the only one that that where there's three of them on the same slide. And. Uh, so yeah, that's my, uh, those are my little fish scales there. And then, uh, so let's move on to our slides, which may or may not be moderately scuffed, may or may not be slightly deadish. <laughs> um, I'm going to put in my, uh, my EIC condenser here. Pop that bad boy in, and we'll pop in our polarizer like that, and then we'll take out our analyzing polarizer and put in our analyzing prism. There we go, and then finally, we will take off our Lomag turret. And pop in the high mag turret. And by the way, one cool thing that is uh, in the works now is um, I just got the parts to uh, basically automate um, automatically detect which objective I'm, I'm using. So my computer will be able to basically read that. And um, once we've got that set up, I'll be able to have like a dynamic scale bar. And uh, that's gonna allow me to do just some like super duper neat stuff. Um, and uh, at least for you guys, you'll you'll never have to, to ask me what magnification I'm at because it will be uh, abundantly clear, That's at least in theory. So uh, yeah, more to come on that. Okay.
Sorry about that. I unplugged my microphone for a second. Oh, let's go to this slide second, actually. Yes, is this my, uh, this is my, my plankton slide. Yeah, this is it. Okay, let's take uh, this out. All right, we're still uh, getting set up here. So here is uh, it's one of my copepods, and uh, it's uh, unfortunately not doing so hot. Look, we got this little, I think it's an ostracod. And yeah, we got some little critters here. We'll have some fun. Let's go ahead and, and uh, switch into DIC here. Take that off. And bump that up to that. Boom. Yeah. So this is actually super, super interesting. Um, there we go. Oh, that's good. Um, where did that little guy go? Was this, uh, yeah, there's that copepod we were looking at. Um, but uh, one thing that I found, so normally when I use my plankton net, I don't get too many ciliates. Um, and there's this little, it's kind of like an ostracod, but it doesn't, I mean, it must be an ostracod, but it's a different kind of ostracod than I'm used to. It's a more spidery kind of crawling ostracod uh, than a swimmer. Even in the in the dish, it was sort of just kind of walking around at the bottom. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So I think this is a Loxodes of some kind. And there are actually a whole bunch of these uh, in this sample. And this is a this is a saltwater sample. It's actually quite salty. Um, I did a little uh, well, while I was there doing some collecting. I did a little taste test to uh, to measure the salinity, and I, I, I can confirm that it is salty. <laughs> and um, yeah, these uh, these loxodes are all over the place in the sample, um, which is just kind of unusual for me. So let's see, I got a few questions in here. Um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, tiny RFID tags. So yeah, I'm basically gonna stick RFID tags to my objectives and, uh, and I'll have a little antenna that will measure um, and detect the highest strength RFID tag, which will hopefully be the objective that's currently in position. And then that will talk to OBS and tell OBS to change a scale bar and maybe even change the, uh, the lookup tables that I'm using. Um, so we'll have basically anytime I change objectives, everything else is just going to like change for the better. So we'll have a scale bar, but we'll also maybe like um, change the contrast like specifically for that one objective. Where did I go? How did I lose it? Wasn't even moving that fast. Okay, uh, let's go back to the 10x then. And um, yeah, and then Marcos asks uh, about encoders. And yeah, I'm going to get um, this is something I had set up a, a long time ago, actually. Um, I basically had magnetic uh, encoders, linear encoders, um, so that I could always know what position I was at. Um, relative to uh, like the, the corner of the cover glass is usually I would, I would basically go to the corner at the beginning of the stream and um, and then we would uh, uh, oh yeah see here's another here's one of these like uh, it's like praying mantis shrimps and it's not a mantis shrimp but it kind of looks like a got the two big feelers there um, but yeah having the the encoders is really nice um, because, you know, if you see something that's interesting and, you, you know, you want to go away to chase something else, but you might want to find that thing again, um, you can just always know where you are. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, the, the scale bar is something. So I had it set up um, back when I was doing Twitch. Um, and, uh, but it was all manual. So I had to remember to, uh, it was just hotkeys. So I had to like remember to change the scale bar. And I was not very good at doing that. Uh, it's just, that's, it's like exactly the kind of thing that is not, not really in my, my wheelhouse of, of things that I'm good at. Um, I get really into the, the stream and I just kind of zone out from anything else. And um, so having it all be manual should just be like super duper cool. What is that? Is that on my uh, condenser? Wait a second, let's give the uh, condenser a good little wipe down there. Oh, I know what that is. Okay, yeah, I can fix that later. Um, so I'm just looking around right now. There were some other little uh, critters on here that have since expired, but might still be interesting to look at, including this one that I'm like, I'm super disappointed um, because it was a really interesting plankton that I had not seen before. I think this is it. Oh, it looks so sad now. No. <laughs> Oh, look at it. Look at those cute little eyes. It used to be such a precious little plankton. This thing was so cool, you guys. Um, I see Teeny asking about how, how polarized light works. Um, that's kind of complicated to, add, to, to answer really quickly um it's the kind of thing that normally you would want to have like a, a whiteboard and and whatnot um but basically i mean light light is a wave right and so um so it vibrates um that it uh vibrations can have like a direction to them so like um you know, some things can, can vibrate side to side or up and down, or they can even kind of vibrate in a circle. And um, so light does that too. Light has a direction to its vibration. And polarized light, when we use polarized light microscopy, we restrict the light to only vibrate in one direction. And um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a quick quick little overview. Man, this thing was so cool. This thing had basically like two little, two little buzz saws of like ciliated buzz saws, and it, hang, it was like hanging on a thread. Oh, it was such a neat little critter. Oh well. It looked kind of like a an asplanchna rotifer. This is like a big old. Big old chunky rotifer. But I suspect it might be, I mean, I feel like everything is just a polychaete worm larva. So it was, it was probably some kind of larva. And unfortunately it just did not survive the, uh, what is that actually? Why is this showing up? That shouldn't show up. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and then there was this thing. That's right. One more thing to check out on this slide. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, I picked this up. I wasn't sure. Now I can see what it is. Yes. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful Coscano discus. So this is a pretty large diatom frustral because I was able to 
see it with the stereoscope and pipette it out. Man, what a beat. <laughs> There's a stream. I found one of these, like, not expecting to find one a few streams back, and we spent, like, a long time looking at it. I, I really do enjoy these uh, these diatoms. And this one's actually, um, so it's, it's uh, one of the valves. And the valve is actually sort of upside down. So this is the top, and now I'm going to focus down through it. And you can see that the edges come in to focus first and then the center. So the center is actually down at the bottom right now. And uh, that's coming up at the back. And so these diatoms, they usually have two valves um, that are like uh, clamshell packaged together. And it's, kind of, it's a really interesting effect when you like focus in and out of it, you get these like patterns. These, uh, I guess it's sort of a, like a moray pattern that we're seeing. That's neat. Yeah, Coscano discus, the, the frustules are just so like perfect. I have, a, I have another slide actually. I posted a picture on the Discord and on Reddit of um, I have a, 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 an arrangement slide with a bunch of Coscano discids on it. And there's another, this is a little, uh, little planktonic diatom there, very small. And then this is another one of our little plankton buddies that didn't make it. They're a lot cooler when they're swimming around and kicking and whatnot. All right, let's go over to the second well on this uh, slide. There's that Luxodes one again. That's so cool. It's got a very like shaggy sort of scoop. Those guys are neat anyway. They don't seem to mind the whatever I did. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is another one of these like crazy scorpion shrimp things. And uh, it's actually got a clutch of eggs on its belly. But unfortunately, this one also seems to have expired. It's pretty sad. Sorry, little dude or little dudette. But we can at least check it out in polarized light. Wow. <laughs> wow. Check that out. Marco says that, uh, he just got his polarizer filters yesterday. He's getting some cool results. Again, another reminder to, to anyone that's new to microscopy, polarizing film is very cheap. You can do polarized light microscopy on any microscope and the results are often really great. Wow. <laughs> those colors it's like a like gemstones or something wow that's really interesting how this is um, how it's segmented like that like most of the time when I see their shells and the shells of like these crustaceans and whatnot they're um, they're pretty uniform in polarized light. And this one, look at that. 
it has these uh it almost looks like a like a geological formation like a um uh one of those thin thin sections of a, of a mineral or something like that wow interest i wonder how that forms that's really really far out i've never seen that before in one of these now look at the head like the head and whatnot is it it almost looks like it's it's a little like the head doesn't seem to have as much of that going on it's back here in in these body segments Oh, look at that. Oh, it's still alive. Yeah, this is some kind of um, shrimp. These, uh, I do need to figure out what these things are called. Because um, I, I see them pretty regularly. Yeah, look at that. It's still, still kicking. water on the slide, but I don't think it's going to do a whole lot. Okay. Yeah, these things, they, I don't know, they just seem to uh, not tolerate my, uh, my slides very well. Yeah, welcome in, uh, Ian. Wow. Still very, very cool. That. Uh, I think there is something else on here. Yeah. And there was this thing. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, this thing also stopped moving around. But uh, yeah, it is one that I'm not familiar with. It's a little bit more like bug looking. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's got, it's definitely not like an insect or anything like that. Um, it's some kind of shrimp, but check out those eyes. Wow. What an interesting formation to those eyes. They're sort of they look like the like the cups go in. I don't know if that's just a, a trick of the light or if that's actually how they are. Like you think with with like insect eyes, the the compound eyes, they have like little little lenslets all over them. Can uh, zoom in a little bit more on this, and we can try. Uh, I don't know how how little DIC will work here. Maybe I should just do a bright field for this actually. It's just a little, a little dark. I actually was kind of liking that. So let's see. Let's try uh, pick this bad boy out. Let's put this bad boy in.
an hour in uh, DIC. Yeah, I just can't quite get a, a good view on this thing. kind of twitching now at the very least there's a diatom <laughs> scooting along on it let's see I don't know if I had much else on this slide in particular oh there's a there's a very pretty little diatom there Slender diatom. Some uh, little tuft of. Uh, we do have a uh, at least some some diatoms. A good amount. Wow, we have a whole lot of these little diatoms. Interesting. This is um, this one's from a scraping I did off of a uh, piling. There was a dock, and I scraped uh, I scraped some some scum off of the piling. It seems these diatoms are uh, very. Abundant in, in that uh, that piling scum. Okay. Let's move on to our uh, our puddle. So this is a sample from that, that puddle that was in the trailer. And here we go. <laughs> we got stuff that's moving. Anybody know what these guys are? Classic. This is Euplodes. And there are tons of Euplodes in this sample. They are very much, I, I think you, you could say that there's like a, a Euplodes bloom in this sample. Yeah, Euplodes are. Uh, are hypotrix. And they've got these uh, these little leg appendages called Siri. They're little bundles of cilia. And then that big uh, that big oral groove that they uh, they use to suck stuff in. Euphrates are just always so fun to watch. Um, they have 
have a lot of character for a, for a single celled organism. They're kind of goofy with their their little legs, and they can like crawl, crawl on stuff. They remind me of uh, of uh, like little pugs. Little goofy, goofy critters. And uh, those aren't the only ciliates that we have on this sample, but they are uh, definitely the most abundant. We'll see a fair amount of them. There's a couple other ciliates that I definitely want to pick out. We've got some... Uh, I guess this is, this is algae here. We got some nice diatoms on this. All over that. Ooh, look at that red thing. Yeah, we got this uh, kind of little piece of uh, vegetation material there. Let's check out see if we got any other critters hanging around here. I know we do, we just have to find them. Let's see. We will go to the uh we be at the 10x at least. There's like nothing on here. Where'd they all go? <laughs> Maybe they're all hanging around in like one spot, which would be nice. Weird. Ah, here we go. Here's one. Oh, here's two. Of course, this is a real classic find these in, uh, in a lot of freshwater samples. This is by Roastamum. When I first saw these, I thought maybe they'd be Gruberia, which are sort of a by Roastamum analog that you Find in marine samples, but uh, I think this water um, here from uh, Bay Point is—it's just a little bit salty. It's um, so I think we're getting the freshwater organisms in here as well, or some like classically freshwater organisms. See you, Tini. Thanks for checking in. This pyrostomum is a single-celled ciliate. These can get pretty big, and the, the gruberia I mentioned before that are very similar to spirostomum can get really big, like millimeters. It is really big. So these are, you generally find them, there's our floaties again. What you guys get off to? Oh, oh did it just uh, contract there? I think I saw it contract. Um, so these, these uh, I typically find them, they're, they're kind of, I think, uh, associated with, with sediment. Um, 
And a lot of critters that you find in the sediment are, are long and narrow so that they can kind of weave through the, the sand grains and whatnot. So I think that's the general idea with spirostomum as well. And back down here, where are these, uh, these Euplodes are congregating. That's so strange. We saw so many initially, and they just managed to hide themselves. There's one. Maybe we're running into similar issues here. We are getting a little bit of evap. Let's see, let's give them a little extra juice. There we go. There they are. Yeah, they're all just like hanging out right here. I guess we just kind of got lucky when we first got on the slide where they were just all where we happened to look. And you can see these two are, uh, well, I guess, I think by now we, we can call them two. They're just uh, still working. They're working on the final, uh, the final steps of mitosis. We watched, um, I think it was the the Brackish Water Boys stream. Um, we watched a, a couple of Euplodes divide. You'd be surprised at uh, how long it takes, even when they look like they're they're almost done, like this. We should have at least one more ciliate of interest on this slide. Might go to the uh, the four X here. Track down another ciliate. Be up in here, maybe. Oh, there's our spirostoma. Euplodes, Euplodes, all the Euplodes. Oh, there's one. Unfortunately, this one is uh, not doing so hot either. Oh, it's too bad. Sorry, little fella. And 
this used to be Stentricurulius. It's kind of weird. It, it's sort of, uh, I wonder this, it almost looks like it's um, shriveled up. So maybe we have like a, um, uh, the, the surrounding environment's a little too salty. just kind of sucked out all the, the water from this thing. Man, saltwater stuff is so temperamental, I have to say. Um, I don't know, it seems like when I get, like there are some places I can go and I know like I'll get uh, the results I'm hoping or expecting. But uh, yeah, well, that's too bad. That's actually not the cilia that I was looking for, though. Let's see, I think it was back down here where you floaties were. Oh, we have a nice, uh, of diatoms here at least. They're, um, uh, was that Pleurocyra maybe? We have one of these, uh, little slates there. Let's go back to the 4X again. See if we can't track down this little dude. Ah, there it is. Hey. Ah, oh, this one looks good. This one looks happy. Well fed as well. Let's see if we can't. Oh, come back. <laughs> Take that out. See that's in. There we go. As usual, just changing all the levers here. So this. A really cool ciliate called condylostoma. And this is one that is like, I pretty much, I think it's pretty much exclusive to like brackish or marine environments. A few species of them, and uh, they can get quite large. This is not one of the largest species, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, they all have this like really interesting, sort of like cleft mouth. And uh, and I've seen these. Uh, swim around and gobble up like dinoflagellates before. But I imagine they have probably a pretty varied diet. They have a big mouth. I imagine if you're small enough to fit in it and have some kind of food value, uh, condylostoma will oblige you. Squishy. Um, these ones um, 
Condylostoma are in my um, my uh, interstitial marine ciliates book, and uh, so that means these are these are ciliates that will kind of exist in between sand grains. And with condylostoma, <laughs> that's fast. Uh, condylostoma definitely has this like pretty amazing ability to like squish itself into cracks and crevices. Seems very deliberate when it does this. Wow, this one's really flying. Oh my goodness. Lost me. There's a little uh, collapse. Yeah, no collapse. Well, it's kind of like uh, little little bumblebees or something. Check out the uh, the patterns on the frustrals there. I want to say they're Pleurocyra because they kind of they catty corner together. You can see they have um, this little like uh, kind of mucus bubble there that they're like using to stick together. These wonderful little chloroplast inside. No good view. Those here they look like little red blood cells, the plastids. There's a collapse. 
Yeah, and then there's these guys again, and then Condylostoma just absolutely juked us. Before. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to our uh, our next set of slides. Really, it's just one slide, but we have two wells on it. So I found a couple of things. <laughs> this is this is the part of the stream where I just show you guys weird stuff that I found. And uh, I have no idea what it is. So uh, on these pilings, I found this, uh, I don't know, this stuff. It looks like sort of seaweed or something, but it's it's very hard and dark like this and, and rigid. And uh, so I don't really know what it is, but every now and then there's a little offshoot and it pops out into something that is very clearly an animal. So is this like a coral? Or something? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> Look at this thing. And it's not like... Uh... They don't, they don't contract when I was, so I had to um, basically like cut off a little section of this um, and to get it onto the slide. And uh, in that whole time, it didn't really seem to like react to me or anything. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't have cilia like a bryozoan would. And I don't even know if I see like stinging cells or anything. But it just looks like this has to be an animal, right? It's very uh, fleshy colored. Um, let's see if that let's see if that shows up in uh, in Brightfield at all. I see you can kind of just rob the uh, the color of things. Neil. And then there's another one here. And they're, oh, they're just so weird. I don't know. Looks like roots. It could be. Yes, it just doesn't, you know, roots, typically plant stuff, you have like these really like obvious square cells. Hey, Jason. Welcome in. Cool name. Um, and uh, and this just looks squishy. It looks too too squishy <laughs> to be a uh, to be a plant. And even when you look at um, these little tube structures, those even look kind of kind of weird. Uh, you know what? Let me let's see. Let's pop in. Uh, yeah, let's get let's get dark field going on this. This might actually be 
constructed. And just right there is fine. And uh, yeah, wow. There we go. Yeah, look at this thing. These little, these little tubes. Actually, I wonder, yeah, okay, I thought that was, maybe I was seeing that. So look at this. So you see there's actually two little uh, tubes. There's there's one that's that's catching the light here and, and lighting up, and there's like a darker one. And so one thing I thought was like, okay, maybe the dark the darker one is some kind of algae, seaweed, or something like that. And then this lighter thing is like a an organism that, that grows on it. Look at that right there where I, where it's chopped. You can see there's some greens that would kind of support that idea. So I don't know. I think this is some kind of like sponge or coral or something. Uh, I just I just don't know. But we'll see. I'm sure I'm sure one of uh, one of the people on on the Discord or Pacific Plankton somebody can can figure out this thing. Strange little. Maybe it's some kind of worm. But again, it doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. And it never moved. Even when I was like in the jar. Like I don't think it's dead or anything like that. Or maybe it is dead. I don't know. Just a weird, weird thing. Oh, I think that was just a bubble. I don't think it was actually moving. If this thing suddenly started moving, it would probably give me a little spook. I'm not gonna lie. Very strange. So yeah, this is a uh, show and tell here. Here's my, here's a weird thing I found. And uh, so that's what's in this well. And then we can go over to this well and we'll, we'll see how this one's doing here. Um, so this is actually, hey, look at that. Hey, we got a plankton. It's not dead. It's alive. So I made this this slide somewhat differently than the other one uh, that, that we had much less success with in terms of getting living organisms <laughs> to look at. Yeah, look at that. We got a little plankton, a little zooplankton. So, um, yeah, my, my theory is, is that, so what I normally do when I, when I prepare slides for, for all of you is, um, I'll, I'll make a Petri dish with, uh, some sample from my jar and then I will over time. I mean, sometimes it's like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, I'll spend time in my stereoscope by petting up like individual little organisms. Uh, that I want to have on the slide and I'll just start like spitting out little like microliter sized droplets uh, onto the slide or into the well and I'll just do that for a while and I suspect that whatever organisms I was looking at or that I was uh, picking up they, they just don't like being exposed for that long there's too much like Maybe the water evaporates and the salinity shoots up or something like that. So with this one, I was just like really quick with it. I just uh, popped some stuff on there and then I, I sealed it with the cover glass. I think this is definitely one. We had a few dead plankton on that first slide. This is this is one. This is one of the more common smaller ones that's around. I don't. Uh, this is definitely the larval form of something. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. 
We can try to get it under, uh, under DIC here. I just want to say this is like a barnacle larva or something like that. I don't know why I think that, but it's in my head. It's crazy what some of these creatures look like in their larval form versus what they eventually turn into. All right, let's uh, let's go back because there's actually something. So the main reason I made this slide in the first place, because I wanted to get. It should be, yeah, it should be at the bottom. It is, yeah. Check this bad boy out. Anybody know what this is? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. So this is a four M. Or at least the shell of a four M. I'm not sure if anybody's home. see um i wonder if this thing has a polarized light response Let's check on that oh yes it does indeed have a polarized light response wow <laughs> it is quite bright in polarized light actually Very shiny. And then uh, let's see what happens when we hit it. Hit the wave plate. Interesting. Not not a whole lot. That's kind of uh, I don't know how I uh, what, what what would that mean? I think about that. I'm not really an expert on like, you know, investigating like all the, the little things that can happen when you shoot something in polarized light. And it's definitely birefringent, but it's almost like it's, uh, it's, it's got like no, uh, no directional component to its biofringence, which would be weird. It doesn't really make sense, but but I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for this. It's crazy though. I mean, it really looks like it's just like in dark field. Um, but yeah, 4Ms are um, single-celled organisms, and I guess they're, they're typically lumped in with the amoeba. And, uh, and they build these shells, which sometimes look like snail shells. Like this one kind of looks like a, a snail shell. And, um, but other times, um, they're just kind of more like globular and, and kind of messy, messy looking. Oh. It really looks almost like no different in, uh, in dark field here. But yeah, this is uh, this is just really cool. 4Ms, um, there's a lot of people that like study 4Ms. 
um, they're uh, kind of an important like like little fossil organisms because um, the shells stay around for a long time. Let's see, I don't know if we got, oh, we got a couple of these little uh, critters here. Before, hard to say. I'll say I think I think zooplankton, especially these little crustaceans, hit them with hit them with dark field. That's usually a good call. Let's see, we can try. Uh, here's polarized light. Polarized light also often a good call. it in frame. Hello, where'd you go? Oh, buddy. There's an ostracod shell. You can tell that because in polarized light, they always completely shine. There it is. We'll pull out our polarizer, put it down here. Sanction. That will be a plate there. Yeah, that's also pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you can definitely see. Um, yeah, you can see those lines, those bright colored lines. Those are those are little muscle ligaments there. I don't know if that's a proper term, muscle ligament, but that's what those are. And it's so cool. I love when you can see like so many of these critters, like, you know, tardigrades and these little crustaceans and whatnot, like mechanically, they're like very simple. There's a lot of just like, you know, the, the human musculature system. And we have all, so many different muscles and like fine little muscles and whatnot. It's very complicated. Like big animals but like all these little animals like a lot of times there's just like one little strand connecting to like each limb or something like that very fun we can try um we'll do uh dark field polarized First, let's first get our dark field going here and get our, our bad boy back in frame. Look at all that stuff. There you are. Ooh, look at all those, uh, those frilly structures. These weren't showing up before. Are you, or maybe this is a, this is a different one than we were looking at, isn't it? I don't know. Um, but now, put it here. I'm gonna crank our ISO way up. Dark field, or as light. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you guys try out Darkfield Polarize, you might find that you can probably see it, like, like no problem. Your eyes are, are extremely sensitive, um, light sensitive devices. Um, you know, if you're ever trying a technique like this, so this is, uh, I guess I should back up here. So, so when you do dark field and polarized light cross polarizers, you know, you're really, really cutting out a ton of light. And um, so this is a very low light technique. And uh, that means that it's going to be difficult to like capture good video of it. I mean, I have a very high end camera and I'm at ISO 16,000 right now. This is pretty, pretty up there. Um, but uh, if you're just observing, uh, you know, one thing you might want to consider doing is like turning out the rest of the lights in the rooms so that your eyes um, can really like adapt to the darkness. Um, you know, watch watch these things in the dark, and uh, and your eyes should be able to, to detect it just fine. And it looks amazing, by the way. I one of the things that I really want to like stress too is like, you know, no matter how like good the video quality is here, like there's really no substitute for just looking through the eyepieces, especially with these polarized light techniques. Like they have so many beautiful colors. And uh, it, it's just, there's no, no, no display can like fully replicate just the, the subtle beauty of these colors. Where's our level four am at? Curious what was that it there? Wow, <laughs> yeah, it's just still it's just still looking like that's so strange. Oh wow. Really interesting. Yeah, one watt LED. Marcus, what what microscope do you have again? Sorry, I'm sure I've asked before. It's just hard to keep track of, of everybody's hardware. Oh yeah, we're just, these little feelers are just so, uh, so thin. We can't really get a full view of them here. I definitely have like considering like can I get a like my my microscope has a 100 watt halogen I'm like is there a 200 watt halogen I could just adapt into this and you can get more light um but often you can um if you have like a microscope that just has like a one watt LED or something oh a Swift Stellar one yeah so you should have plenty of room you know if you if you want to modify that thing with a like a high power LED, you'll have room for that. And um, you know, one of the one of the like first things I did when I when I got my Journey of the Microcosmos microscope is I just uh, I modified it with a uh, like a five watt uh, I think it was like a nine watt LED. <laughs> that thing is that is like <laughs> hurt your eyes territory. Um, but it really it's really nice for techniques like this, and then also. Uh, it just generally improves your, your video quality because you can expose at lower ISOs. Let's get the, uh, there's my,
Where is my... Uh, oh, 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 come on. Ah, oh, there we go. I see some. Oh, come back. Baby, come back. Cellophane. Oh, no. Come back. Oh, Eve. There we go. Purple, blue. Ooh, oh wow, that's a real deep blue. <laughs> this looks like uh, almost bioluminescent or something. Of course, it's not, but. Messing with full res light. So again, this is um, all I'm doing right now. Let's see. Like I can take off the uh, this. This is just the, the cross polarizers now. I'm just messing with uh, a wave plate and then also some cellophane. Cellophane just has some interesting wavelength dependencies. Better, it's better when you combine it with a wave plate, that's for sure. Well, let's see here. So, yeah, since uh, since we got kind of off to a scuffed start with the uh, with our, our samples not being tremendously alive, um, we could always do good old backup plan just take a little time to admire some, uh, some polarized light crystal slides uh, let's see where it is there we go this is a good condenser for this I think we'll go back to the low mag. So now I'm going to put in a slide of crystallized acetaminophen in polarized light. Actually, hold on. Let's read it. Let's look at it without the polarizer first. Just to have a little fun. Yeah, you know, this is uh, 
So it's, it's basically just a slide with some crystal acetaminophen on it. I might actually be getting a little bit of polarization effect since I have one polarizer in. But uh, we put the other polarizer in. Then all of a sudden, we get some pretty radical colors. I like these, I, I think of these slides as like instant wallpaper. Right now we're using the 2X. I'm actually not sure. So the best wave plate to use for this is actually a uh, quarter wave. I'm not sure. Not sure if I have that one around right now. Got my other cheap condenser on the ground. It's not a problem. Um, but let's see. Well, we can use the uh, whole wave plate here. As we rotate the full wave plate around, we can get some dynamic changes in these color effects. Yeah, and this is, I mean, it's just very like striking you see that like the background really is like just black and then crystals so essentially you know what's what's going on here is um, we have two polarizers that are that are crossed right, that are blocking out any light that, that's coming straight through um, but when that polarized light passes through these crystals it is uh, modified. Whoa, that's weird. Under this uh, this bubble here, like those little variations go away. Huh. This is acetaminophen. Yeah, these, these crystals uh, twist the the orientation of the light's polarization, um, but they do so in a wavelength-dependent way. And so sometimes, like here, like like this bright spot in the middle, like all the wavelengths are getting turned, and it just kind of passes through more or less normally. And then for these really colorful areas. Um, certain wavelengths are getting cut out while the rest come through and so that gives us different hues. Yeah, and you can just like, you can spend ages on slides like this. Ah, yes, I remember this formation right here. I think I have a wallpaper of this exact little formation. Yeah, 
and uh, yeah, so I got these slides. There's a guy on eBay that sells um, basically polarizers, but also uh, wave plates. And uh, if you order a certain amount of like stuff from him, or if you order certain things, I'm not sure how exactly it works. He'll throw in these uh, these uh, slides for you. These like bonus slides that you can enjoy, and they're really cool. I'm I'm really glad he does that. It's it's a really neat little thing and they're um they're kind of messy they're not like super nicely prepared but like they're quite beautiful so i actually have several of them this is uh acetaminophen and this is saffronin i don't exactly know what saffronin is here and so saffronin like has its own little distinct growth pattern here thank you face are cool too like you can see it's fun to just you know you you get a view like this and then you kind of can let your mind wander and imagine what, what does this look like to you what kind of landscape not saffron but it's it's called saffronin Oh, saffronin, it's a, um, it's a biological stain. So it's a stain. And, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see where it comes from. But yeah, it's basically used in uh, cell staining. I wonder if it makes the cells biorefringent. It does have, um, if, I, if I take out this polarizer, maybe we can see it. Um, it does have sort of a, a pinkish hue. Not super obvious here, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little rosy, basically, I guess is, is how I would say. And then we got this one, which is labeled orange G. So orange G is another another uh, stain. And once again, this has its own particular little crystal structure and quirks. Right now, Marcos, this is literally just cross polarizers. There's nothing else, nothing else in there. Just regular old cross polarizers. Um, so, you know, this is sort of a illustrative of like kind of a distinction 
you know, between um, certain materials. So some materials, um, you know, are, are just sort of have a light and dark polarization response. They don't have like a wavelength dependence. And so to sort of give it, give those a wavelength dependence, basically, when to, essentially to, to make them, to make the things that are just light and dark turn colorful, that's when we use the wave plate. And that sort of like pre pre encodes a, a wavelength dependence on the light, and then when the, the specimen does its normal thing on it, we see that as like a wavelength dependence in the specimen. Um, but uh, with uh, with these crystals here, the uh, the crystals themselves are basically acting like the wave plates. and are causing these very fun colors. And of course, you know, this isn't the, uh, you know, it's not unusual to see these kinds of colors. In fact, um, if you've ever looked at a, a ruler, a clear plastic ruler, or a tape dispenser, something like that. You'll also often notice it has uh, some interesting colors going on. And if you go over here near the uh, hole in the ruler, anywhere that there is sort of a uh, strain in the plastic, you'll get these really interesting patterns. So yeah, what's the difference between the full and the quarter. So uh, the full wave plate, which is the one that I use most often to sort of add fun, fun colors um, to, to stuff. Um, that is uh, what's, what's referred to as a tint plate. And when it's in actually sort of the uh, quote unquote correct position, you get this sort of pinkish purple. And uh, what that actually is, is telling us is, is that it's, um, uh, it's cutting out all the green light. Um, so uh, the green light is, is, is polarized against the second polarizer and so it's cut out but um, the, the other wavelengths are allowed through um, so it basically sort of selectively cuts out one one wave wa wavelength um, and to be honest I don't know like all the, the details of like why you do that I mean I have some sense of it but I can't explain to you exactly like, you know, when when you'd use a uh, a tint plate uh, versus something else, and then uh, the quarter wave plate is a um, a wave plate that allows you to uh, convert l linearly polarized light uh, into. Um, uh, elliptical or, or circular polarized light and um, and so that, that's a way of saying that we kind of give we convert it uh, to light which uh, which sort of has uh, it has no it doesn't have a linear polarization anymore so you can no longer perfectly extinguish it with another polarizer um, that has some interesting applications as well. Um, 
And then there's the half wave plate, which is basically just like a polarization rotator. Um, so one of the things I recommend, Marco, since you just got some polarizing film, um, is um, take two, two sheets of your polarizing film and, and cross them against each other. And then if you can like backlight them with something um, and, um, and then just start like putting, putting plastic things in between them, like, like plastic sheeting and plastic objects and, and whatnot, clear plastic stuff and, and start turning it and, and just playing with it. Um, and you'll find like some really interesting stuff. In fact, a lot of plastics can be used as half wave plates. Um, like it's so weird. I, I and, and there, there's so much going on in, uh, uh, in terms of like like the the polymer chemistry and and, and the optics, very it's a very complicated subject, and I'm definitely not qualified to speak on you know everything uh, everything that, that that's happening in that system, but. You can at least get some sense of uh, what might be happening, but there, there's a lot to learn, and I still have a lot to learn about all the different intricacies of polarized light. can say is that it never ceases to surprise and entertain me. Okay, well, I think uh, I think we'll call it a, a night here. I'm sorry we had kind of uh, samples that were. Ooh, wow! These look at me. <laughs> this is this is we're back in dark field polarized light. By the way, that happened. Um, um <laughs> Oh, I can put it down a little bit, huh? Maybe we'll uh, we'll call it a, a night. We'll take a, an early night here, and uh, and next time I'll try to have some samples that are mostly alive, as opposed to mostly dead. And uh, maybe I'll talk to Pacific Plankton a little bit about the intricacies of, of preparing uh, marine slides. some deli container plastic under here. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll be back uh, next Sunday. And uh, yeah, we'll have something new. I don't know where I'll go just yet, but we'll do we'll do fresh water next Sunday. So we sure we get living stuff. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.